Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. If you're friends with me on Facebook, you'll realise that I've been pondering the subtleties of appreciation and gratitude. And I posted a post on Facebook <laughs> asking people about their thoughts about the difference between the two different words or states of being more than words. Because I've, well, I, I know I run a gratitude group myself. So I know that gratitude is a very high vibration and that if we step into it, we, we become more open. We see more things to be grateful for in life. And um, by seeing more things and focusing on it, we just appreciate life in general so much more. And it's recently been brought to my attention that appreciation actually has a higher vibrational frequency than gratitude. And I hadn't really contemplated this before, but my question on Facebook was really trying to get people's thoughts and ideas on this themselves. And this episode is all about that. And I'm going to share some well, weave into this episode some of the things that came out of that question and the responses that I got on Facebook. So firstly, I just want to touch on a number of people said that it didn't really matter which was a higher vibration, that it was just semantics. And this did make me stop and think and question myself. But actually, I think that semantics is a very important thing. And I'm going to dive into it a little bit. And I know it's not about gratitude or appreciation, but it's about something that I'm really fascinated with. And I think it's important to share it with you. But what their questioning did do for me was it reminded me of something I learnt when I did my coach training many years ago. And that is the concept that we cannot know something we don't have language for. So we need to have the language to be able to experience something. Otherwise, we can't make sense or meaning out of it. And we just don't, it just doesn't exist for us. And it's a very difficult thing to try and explain or to allow someone to experience that because in its very nature, you can't really experience something you can't experience. But I'm going to share a few examples with you today in the hopes that it'll plant a seed and maybe that might get you to think about it and to deepen your understanding. In the late 1800s, early 1900s, a gentleman by the name of Rudolf Steiner, who was an Austrian architect, social reformer, philosopher, and the founder of the Waldorf schools, um, he took this, him and a few friends or colleagues, or I, don't, I mean, I don't really know, went to the Australian outback and they took one of the world's first cameras with them. And they met with a tribe who had seen very little of Western culture, if nothing at all. And they took a photograph of the chief and then they showed the chief the photograph and they are well and the question to you is what do you think the chief saw now what the chief saw was actually nothing and i know when i first found this answer i thought that's absolutely ludicrous he must have seen something but the chief had no language for picture he had no language for photograph he had no way to make sense of what he was seeing so his brain didn't compute and simply didn't see anything. Once they'd explained to him the process of, um, of what a picture was and they explained to him the process of photography, he was then able to see the picture. And it does sound very far-fetched and I know that I didn't really believe it at first either, but there's other examples over the years as well. There's um, stories of when the indigenous Americans first saw ships sailing onto their shores, how they didn't see ships, but they saw floating clouds. Again, they had no language and no, no, no way of knowing what a ship actually was. So their brains tried to make sense of what they were seeing and the closest they could come to was clouds. And the last example is a personal example. And that is about, I used to live in Botswana, which I'm sure most of you already know. And my friend was trying to tell me he wanted to get an integrated bumper fitted to his car. And I was sitting in my office at the time and we were having a conversation on the phone. And I had absolutely no idea what an integrated bumper was. And I said so. And I was absolutely convinced that I'd never seen one in my life. Anyway, he sent me through a picture of what one looked like. Um, and again, I could have sworn blind I had never, ever seen one in my life, that they must be incredibly rare and very few people must have them. 
And yet, when I then left the office and went out for lunch, I suddenly saw them all over the place. Um, in Botswana, there's a lot of people that own four by fours because of the terrain and just the way the country is. Um, and there were the, these integrated bumpers were numerous. But because I didn't have any language to understand what they were, I just had never ever seen them before. My brain had never picked up on them because it was as if they'd never existed until the moment that I'd seen the photograph and then gone out and seen them. So it's, a, it's an interesting concept and it, it, that in itself could be a whole episode on its own. But this is, we're going to be diving deeper into appreciation gratitude and I'll, I'll weave it into what we're going to be discussing about that just now. So I hope I've demonstrated that language is actually very important and that without language, we can't experience certain things in our lives. And that some people might experience, things, might experience things differently to us because they have different language and a richer language than we do. So actually developing a rich language and a rich context helps us to experience things differently in our world. Language also adds a richness and a depth and a texture to experiences in, in our lives. Just as learning to taste wine or taste tea or taste chocolate um, adds a greater enjoyment or greater appreciation for those particular things. In fact, when before I ran my wine business, to me, I mean, I kind of knew what wine I liked and what wine I didn't like, but I wasn't a connoisseur by any means. <laughs> pretty much drink most red wine that was put in front of me. But after I sort of worked in the wine industry and I did lots of wine tastings and I really got a, an understanding for the complexities of wine, I appreciated it on a whole nother level. And to me, language is like that as well. And I want to share something with you. In different cultures around the world, we experience life differently. So for instance, um, near the North Pole um, and places where it's very snowy and icy, people will have a lot more vocabulary to describe snow than they would do in, say, sub-Saharan Africa. And um, as an example of that, I mean, I'm currently living in the UK, and as most people who know the UK, we get a lot of rain. <laughs> and we have many more words to describe rain than a lot of places that don't have a lot of rain. And as I was researching writing this blog, I, I came across some fabulous words so some of them are luttering down, pothering down, tipping it down, drizzling, mizzling. Um, and there's many, many, many more different words that you can describe rain. And I just think that the descriptions themselves, actually almost you can experience the type of rain just from the descriptions, like mizzling. I mean, to me, mizzling is, is it's not even really a rain. <laughs> it's like a wet kind of damp cloud that kind of, you know, is a bit heavier than a cloud. And I, I have no idea actually what the translation of mizzling means, but when I hear the word, I can kind of sense what that kind of rain would be like. And say, luttering down, to me, it would kind of be almost sort of sheets of rain, I kind of imagine, big splashes and sploshes of rain coming down. So words add a texture to something. And I want to share a poem, which some of you might, if you like poetry, will be very aware of. But before I do that, I just want you to experience the difference between these two things. So imagine I said to you, I saw some daffodils. Now, it's a very flat, two-dimensional, informational way of sharing something with you. And I'm going to read this, so you'll have to excuse me for looking down at what I've got in my hands, because I don't know it off by heart, shamefully but I want to read this to you and see the difference in the experience of it. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when at all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering, dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of the bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, 
they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. And um, I'm sure most of you will know that that's by William Wordsworth. And I'm sharing it because the one is simply a description, as I said, a two dimensional experience. And the other is a stepping into and almost being at one with the daffodils. And I'm sharing this because I'm going to now go into gratitude and appreciation. And there is relevance to the build up. <laughs> there is some relevance, I promise you, in what I've been sharing. So reverting back to gratitude and appreciation, the conclusions that I've come to is that gratitude, whilst it is a high vibrational energy state that is great for us to try and be in as much as possible, it requires that certain conditions are met. So I'm grateful if it's a beautiful day outside because it affects how I feel and how I enjoy myself and what I'm able to do. I'm grateful if my son is well behaved because it makes my life easier and I'm more able to enjoy things. So with gratitude, there is a, a need to, to meet certain expectations that I have. And if those expectations are met, and if those conditions are satisfied, I am then able to feel grateful. But appreciation is very, very different because you can appreciate someone else's point of view, even if it doesn't agree with yours. You can appreciate someone else's struggles and understand what they've gone through. You can appreciate contrast, whether it's good or bad. Uh, you can appreciate the lessons that you've learnt in life, even if the experience that gave you those lessons was not particularly easy. So appreciation, even from that perspective, is very different. And I've come to experience it even more differently than gratitude as well. Um, this happened one day I was outside hanging the washing up and my in the garden, we've got a very small little garden here, and there's this weird little hole in the middle of the grass. And I kind of encouraged it because the cats in the summer love to roll around in it. And in fact, the one little cat we've got, Matty, Whenever I go out into the garden at all, she comes racing out with me so that she can play in this hole with me because I generally indulge her and I play with her while she's rolling around in the hole. But this day that I went out and I was hanging up the washing, um, I was thinking and I was mulling over the differences between gratitude and appreciation. And I decided to just really focus on appreciating my moment with Matty. And what I came to the conclusion was that gratitude, this, this separation, I'm grateful for something external to myself, but appreciation builds connection and oneness. So whilst I'm grateful that Matty is in my life and she gives me joy, when I was playing with her and I was stroking her fur and I could feel her purring and I was in appreciation of it, it was almost like I became one in the experience with her. I couldn't have had the experience without her. And the more I focused on the appreciation, the more I zoomed in on sort of being in that moment with her. And it's, I don't know, it, I, I, <laughs> this is all kind of new to me. It's a new exploration and a new pondering, but I just wanted to share that with you. And I want to share the two definitions. And again, I'm gonna look down and read them to you because those in themselves I found interesting as well. So the definition for gratitude is, Thankfulness or gratefulness, from the Latin word gratis, pleasing, thankful, is a feeling of appreciation felt by and or similar positive response shown by the recipient of kindness, gifts, help, favours or other things of generosity towards the giver of such gifts. And I just want to highlight, it is the recipient. So it's somebody being receiving something that they are then grateful for. And, and I thought it was interesting how appreciation is also woven into it. But this is the definition for appreciation. So appreciation is the recognition of the quality, value, significance or magnitude of people and things. A judgment or opinion, especially a favourable one. An expression of gratitude. So there's the gratitude woven into appreciation as well. Awareness or delicate perception, especially of aesthetic qualities or values and a rise in value or price, especially over time. And I just thought that was really interesting because appreciation isn't about receiving something. It's about focusing in on noticing something and choosing to appreciate it. 
And finally, I just want to share, so I've spoken about focusing in on things, and I've been playing around, my first realisation of it was obviously Matty in the garden, but since then I've been playing around with it, and I've realised that you can actually grow to appreciate almost anything. In fact, I haven't found something, I've just put the almost in there because this is not scientifically proven and I've no idea if you can actually appreciate everything. But if you focus on something enough, with an open heart and with appreciation, all of a sudden there's like um, a joining together, like a stepping into space and time together with that thing that you're choosing to appreciate. Um, I did it with a leaf um, and I've done it with just even looking at my clothes, at the weaves on my clothes and choosing just to sort of be in the moment with the pattern that they create. And, and it's just really amazing to me. It's amazing how I can really truly almost become one with anything when I choose to focus on it and be in a space of appreciation. So in conclusion, both gratitude and appreciation are very high vibrational. But I think I have to agree with Abraham Hicks that appreciation just somehow just takes it to a whole nother level. And instead of experiencing separation, it brings us into a oneness, a togetherness with that that we appreciate. I hope you've enjoyed this. And next week, I'm going to be sharing a, an episode that I recorded with somebody who had commented on the post that I did on Facebook um, to give their ideas and thoughts on appreciation and gratitude. And if you want to access any of my resources, have a look at my online courses or anything that I do in line with raising consciousness and evolution of self, then just follow the link to my website in the notes below and you'll find everything on there. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.